peace. My name is Muhammad Hussein Huwaidi. For those who cannot say it, it is Muhammad Hussein Huwaidi. And I wish to talk about a new model of the universe. We do have different models of it, apart from the most prevailing one, of course, the Big Bang. We may end up discussing this forever due to the massive amount of information and knowledge base. Nevertheless, I expect that the audience to be at least familiar with some basic concepts to follow up with the material to be presented here. In reality, none of us is a superman or a superwoman. We all need supporting people. First, I wish to thank you all. Second, I wish to thank my wife who has had to put up with my insanity at many times. Third, I wish to acknowledge that my son Mustafa has big part and role in this work. In this video, we will follow dynamic organization that will follow some basic concepts such as the classical earth and solar model and we are going to just skim through the current model of the universe that depends on the big bang and then we are going to go through our proposed honeydew universe and maybe we're going to be discussing some of the research potentiality the geocentric model has existed for some time and it dates back for more than 2600 years ago until it has become a dogma in the second century AD uh, Claudius Ptolemus has formalized it and basically this states that the earth is the center of the universe and everything else revolves around it. Although the geocentric model was observational, that is what you see is what you get, but unfortunately it was not quite right. We may not want to dwell more into it, but there are certain things that are, were not expl ex explicable in this format as can be seen here on the right hand side where they did not know why Mars had a loop and retreated because if it was going around the earth it wouldn't actually do that I advise you to follow the link for more information the heliocentric system which actually puts the sun in the middle rather than the earth was first pronounced by the Polish scientist Nicholas Copernicus and unfortunately when he was alive he was not able to publish his work therefore his book was published in the same year when he died Copernicus heliocentric model was much better than the geocentric one. Nevertheless, it did not match exactly Johannes Kepler's data. Johannes Kepler is a German scientist. Kepler matches the data and comes up with a more accurate model that makes the orbits of the planets to be an ellipse around the sun where it stays fixed in one of the foci. The most prominent model of the universe now is what is known as the Big Bang. And there is no reason to go through it again. For more information, follow the provided link. How is the universe shaped? John Pierre Lamonet, French scientist, in his book, the wraparound universe answers these questions, but to go them, 
to go through them basically there are three proposed shapes of the universe going from bottom to up we have the flat universe where we don't know where it begins or ends and it is basically flat also we have the middle one which is the curved it's like a saddle universe where of course we don't may we may not know where it begins or ends but this is kind of a viable propo proposal proposal also as also John Pierre Lomine proposed that we have kind of a spherical universe where the universe is on the skin of this sphere and there are of course people we cannot verify this empirically because no matter what we can do we cannot send a laser across the universe to see if it comes back to us or not because it will take almost forever it may take billions of years until it comes back to us so the scientist everything is considered energy even matter so if we go back to the big bang theory we see that dark matter and dark energy have been introduced to explain the current model of the universe. The dark matter is an attractive pull that keeps galaxies together and the dark energy is a rebelling force that causes the galaxies to fly away from each other. Initially, the dark matter dominated. Now, the dark energy prevails. Well, in the current model of the universe, everybody sees himself as the center of the universe, where we at Earth, or let's say at Milky Way, we see everything is flying away from us. And this gives us the assumption that that we are the center of the universe but wherever you go in the universe you see everything is expanding away from you and this is a little bit perplexing concept I suggest that you go through the link to for further information maybe some of us have heard of Andromeda Andromeda is another galaxy that is expected to collide with our uh, galaxy. This is a pretty perplexing because we are assuming and thinking that everything is actually should be drifting away from us. But why is this galaxy coming toward us? This is something that maybe needs to be explained. And in YouTube, there are some actually excellent videos that describe this more. The Haridu universe is similar in shape that is close to the one proposed by John Pierre Lomine, but it is not cinema to it. Our assumption is that this is closed, no energy loss or gain. It ponders about gravitational, which is dark matter. Also tries to explain the acceleration, which is considered to be dark energy. And it contemplates, contemplates about galactical collision. Why we have galactical collisions when actually everything is drifting away from everybody else. Let's talk a little about the anatomy of a honeydew. And the picture, the picture you see, the left one has been borrowed from the lower uh, link. A honeydew is a fruit that we have. It starts small and it grows. It grows to a certain level. Uh, when it gets dry, we take it out. But its structure is interesting and it is analogous to 
the universe that we are going to be proposing. That, as you can see, there is a void, kind of a void in the middle. And we have the meat of it or the fruit that we eat, which is called the mesocarp. The mesocarp is actually limited internally by endocarp and externally by the epicarp. From mathematical point of view, let us, let's assume that R is the radius of the endocarp and S is the radius of the epicarp. Let's look at something from mathematical point of view to see actually or to get the feeling that we are accelerating that point P here seems to be accelerating away from point Q because of actually constant growth of R. So let's go a little bit through the math. I try to make it as simple as possible, but the circumference of a circle is actually 2 pi r, and everybody knows that. When we come to calculate the distance between p and q in terms of the angle between them, which we will consider to be theta, it is just a circumference multiplied by theta divided by 2 pi, which equals actually 2 pi r. S is the longer sir, uh, radius after the circle is, is being enlarging, and it, is, it equals to r plus delta r in actually delta t, or in time frame. So d prime is the distance that has increased due to the increase of the radius. And the difference in this between the two times is called delta t. Now this d is different from the other d. This d means this distance. And distance equals velocity multiplied by time. Let's reshape the formula to make actually v, which equals to d over t. When we take the first derivative of the velocity, we get the rate of change which of velocity in a time, which is actually what we call acceleration. And the first derivative of this is going to be negative d divided by t squared. And the negative sign here indicates that we are accelerating away from the object if we were actually coming toward the object, it would have a positive uh, value. This is we are drafting here. This is very a normal linear equation for actually the circumference. And as we can see here, it's, it's similar to a function. Let's say fx equals to mx plus b, and m is the rate of change, or actually is the acceleration of this circle or two points on the circle. We wish to make everything simple. So we look at this from classical physics or what we call it Newtonian physics. Of course we've borrowed the right hand hand side from a link. It's a very long link so I, this is why I wasn't able to put it below but you can search for it on the internet. But Newton's first law states that an object at rest stays at rest, an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Or this is kind of, we say, the law of inertia. The second law of Newton, it states that we are now adding to it acceleration and acceleration requires force on a certain mass. And usually mass is constant. So if we want to accelerate any mass, we have to put into it certain force. This is why we have the formula force equals acceleration multiplied 
the, by the mass. We say we want to propose a honeydew universe. Our honeydew universe starts from a singularity as we can see in the middle of this circle. This is just a cross section. It is kind of closed spherical system. If we take Newton's first law and things have started from the middle, there is no force that will stop them from stopping. So they will actually move with a constant speed. And this is expected. This does not defy Newton's first law. So let, let's look at this cross section that is assumed to start from the singularity. The universe expands according to Newton's first law and will not be thwarted from doing so because there are no other forces acting on it other than the initial explosion. And the matter itself of the universe whose center of gravity is represented by the dotted red line that causes the inner circle to expand with outward, outward acceleration. And of course, gravity is synonym to acceleration. And the opposite is true from the external circle where it's being slowed down due to the inner gravity that satisfies Newton's first law. And from this inner acceleration and expansion and from the external deceleration, we are going to have eventually some galaxies collide to with each other. You see, one galaxy is coming from outward direction and the other galaxy is coming from the inner direction and they will eventually collide together. Let's see what happens here when we progress and this is now we are having time. Time our universe actually expands and becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And bigger. So it goes almost indefinitely. It goes indefinitely because there is nothing to stop the matter to just stop. And this is just basically going back to Newton's first law. Let's now go more to see what happened. Let's recap a little bit here. So, this is our, a cross-section of our honeydew universe, and we understand that the endocarp accelerates outward. Of course, and this is, we are using now the first two laws of Newton, first and second. It is going because there is no, no force is acting on it to stop it. And there is in the middle, which we, if we consider to be the kind of the center of gravity of the universe, it is actually pulling, pulling it using gravitational force, which is actually acceleration. The apocarp accelerates inward, although it is going outward at the same time because of the other factor that is pulling it inward, so this is again both first and second Newton law. Maybe in the future, the apocarp, it may hit a wall that stops it from expansion, causing further inward acceleration. We can assume that the missile carp is maintaining its volume. That's once it maintains its volume, it means actually the the actual fruit or meat of it, the, the distance will shrink and becomes smaller and smaller with time. Or we can assume for it to be growing, and this means that we are going to have less density, or it is shrinking when it's going to have more density. 
or we can assume also this is not a closed system this is actually an open system where we add more energy to it of course there are so many variations of thinking but let's stick to something that is closed just to make things simple and make kind of uh, by simplicity we'd like to promote understanding and let's as what well, so the pressure from endocarp and epicarp to the middle cause dark matter which is actually forcing things to stick together meanwhile the expansion of the circle and it is growing larger and larger with time actually it leads to acceleration which we may say it is kind of dark energy in this graph we can see that dark matter and dark energy are perpendicular to each other where dark matter is actually going kind of toward at the center of the universe meanwhile dark energy goes across the surface of the universe of the sphere maybe whatever we see is just a wedge from the whole honeydew maybe we cannot tell we need to verify that so let's go and see what's further research needs to be done to verify this model that we are assuming to be expanding it's not fixed in size so we need to have plenty of data of the heavens preferably of course 4d and we need to implement sophisticated mathematical models for example finite elements and we need of course to take time dilation into consideration maybe we need to migrate and i don't want to discuss migration here because it is something used in seismic and it is more complicated in seismic due to different velocities but in our case we don't have a variant velocities we have only the speed of light which is almost constant and also we can observe the right directionality of expansion and this can be should be away from the center of the sphere and across its sphere itself colliding galaxies are in line with each other toward the center of the sphere we can orient ourselves approximately with the car all for the data of course this has been accumulated knowledge from the luminaries you see here like Brian Green, Mitchell Karkook, Carl Sagan, Stephen Hawkins and of course Mr. Tyson and there are many others of course we cannot fit but if you read the books or you watch the videos of these gentlemen you will see of course more and learn more about the universe of course on tv you will have lots of broadcasting channels and here are some examples that you you might want to follow <coughs> their link and of course the online references are plethora and you can go and visit all of them if you want or you can go to uncle google and search and you'll find everything thank you for your time thank you for watching if you have any suggestion any critique please let us know thank you very much